Hi, I'm Kevin Lee. I'm uh, the, with the eMarketing Association, but my day job is I run Did It, a uh, 83, 84 person digital first ad agency. Um, I also run a nonprofit called Giving Forward, which is in the cause marketing business. I have the pleasure of being here with Sean O'Neill, who I've known for longer than I care to admit. Um, and Sean's been on pretty much every side of the digital ecosystem. Uh, right now, he's helping run Inclusive. Uh, and so for those of us who don't know what in Inclusive is, why don't you give us the elevator pitch, Sean? Sure, yeah. Uh, who Inclusive is, we're a media monitoring and uh, measurement software company uh, headquartered in Silicon Valley, uh, been around for about a decade. Uh, we're backed by Salesforce Ventures and Storm Ventures and Wildcat Ventures. Uh, and uh, we're mostly trying to help the communications industry uh, discover better ways to measure their success, uh, prove their success and improve their performance. Um, we, we have a mission, uh, you know, at Unclusive, we believe that the practice of communications and in particular earned media is the most powerful form of marketing. Uh, you know, when you think about it, and it's a pretty well-known adage that brands are not built on what companies say about themselves. They're really built on what others say about those companies, right? When you think about uh, who you go to when you're researching a new product or considering some new service, um, you know, you don't go to the manufacturer, right? Necessarily first, you're probably looking for some third party editorial or some reviews or some type of, you know, uh, uh, you know, non-biased uh, content uh, that, uh, you know, really gives you the information you're looking for in an impartial way. And that's really at the heart of what earned media editorial is all about. Um, the problem is that the communications industry uh, has lacked the measures to demonstrate this impact, right? Um, uh, in, in the right terms, the terms that matter most, right? And, and many PR practitioners are still relying on what we call proxy metrics, um, you know, like the sheer volume of press coverage maybe that a company has received uh, or the estimated number of readers who may have been exposed to that, pre that press coverage. Um, and the issue is, of course, that not only do those metrics, these pure quantity metrics, not tell the story of the quality uh, or certainly the impact of that coverage, um, we've actually felt that, you know, talking in these terms actually erodes credibility, right? It's just not a credible measure of success. And so our mission is to help the communications industry you know, and elevate the communications industry um, through the same types of data and technology that other marketing functions have achieved success with, right? When you think about every other marketing function, uh, you know, over the last 15 plus years, at which have gone through this digital transformation, they've all been enabled and elevated through data and technology and, um, and it really advantaged from it. Um, and also the marketing organization has, you know, really shifted uh, its perception as being just a cost center to now being a revenue center and a growth center. So, you know, our mission very much is to, you know, help the communication uh, teams, you know, improve their performance, right, through the same types of optimization and also, you know, get the credit they deserve. Yeah, that's uh, that's a big part of it. Um, obviously, uh, back when I started in, in SEO uh, over 25 years ago, you know, SEO wasn't really considered earned media, but now it's really you know looked at as as part of the overall earned media plan with content marketing, digital PR, traditional PR overlap into social, and so it was one of the reasons that did it bought three PR agencies is sort of they understand the story the storytelling and the corporate communications and press relations, but they didn't always understand the, uh, the ramifications, the longer term ramifications of getting a good PR hit. And the fact that that PR hit could show up in the SERP forever, right? And end up being a really important element of, of uh, reputation management. So the, all that stuff ended up getting really intertwined. You know, when you guys talk to the communications professionals at the agencies versus sort of in-house corp communications people, you know, are they thinking about earned media so holistically or are they still pretty siloed and thinking about it like, oh, it's just public relations and doesn't relate to social or it doesn't relate to search? 
It's a it's a great question. Um, there has definitely been uh, you know uh, a. a uh, convergence between, you know, what we call communications, which is a relatively broad term, uh, you know, and, and, and within that public relations and other uh, marketing functions. And, and in some ways they're, they're colliding, um, you know, uh, and you mentioned two great examples like, you know, search engine marketing, even social media, um, they've sort of bounced around different departments over the years, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, the beginning social media, actually, I think more was, found within the, the communications and PR teams, right? Because it was much more about, uh, you know, community management, right? And, and speaking to, you know, you know, sort of what was happening within your social communities. And then it started to get repositioned as a marketing channel. And so the marketing team started to take it over. And now paid advertising, of course, is really at the, the forefront of social strategy, um, you know, but, but search engine marketing also, it's very interesting. And, and this is one of the things that I think philosophically and inclusive, we spent a lot of time around is, um, you know, we see so many of the similarities between things like SEO and PR, um, you know, for example, you know, search engine marketers think in terms of keywords, right? Well, so do PR people, right? PR people are thinking in terms of keywords too. They just call them sound bites, <laughs> right? But we're all basically dealing in the same concept of some key message, some key word, some sound bite. Um, search engine marketers though have great technology like did its technology where not only they, do they get to see every time a term was searched or a result was served, you actually can track whether or not that resulted in someone responding, coming to your website. And then what did they do after they got to your website? So you can actually look at the full, you know, downstream effect at the individual keyword level. And that's what search engine optimization is all about, of course. In the world of communications and, and PR, which is, again, is equally as focused on the concept of a keyword or a soundbite, um, we've not had that technology until now, right? The PR teams, all that they could do is measure whether or not their sound bites showed up in a news article, right? They call that message pull through, like literally, did I do a good enough job influencing the reporter to use the language that I provided in my briefing? Did they pick up my sound bites? And so while that's an effective measure of, you know, how you did pitching the story, it does not tell you anything about the effectiveness of those keywords, right? That would, and, and stopping there and saying, hey, congratulations, your sound bites, your keywords showed up in the article. That's the equivalent of congratulating a search engine marketer on the fact that their keywords were just served as results, right? right? Or maybe clicked on, right? But we, of course, know as digital marketers for the last 25 years, click rate is, you know, uh, is, is misleading. So one of the things that on Inclusive, we've actually spent a lot of time and a lot of R&D around is helping the PR teams analyze their sound bites and keywords, uh, just like search engine marketers do. Uh, so that you not only can see how many times your sound bites and keywords showed up in articles, but you can actually look at the level of social media engagement each of those keywords has received, or how much website traffic each keyword drove to your website, or how many website actions and conversions each keyword has generated. Um, you'll appreciate this, Kevin, as much as anyone, probably more than anyone. We actually created a technology called NEO messaging, which is uh, stands for news engine optimization. It's basically SEO for PR um, so that you can finally have a dashboard as a PR person of all of your keywords and all of your sound bites, but not just look at how many times they showed up on articles, but look at the downstream effect of each individual keyword. So when you're pitching the media, you can optimize the keywords that you're actually putting into your pitch. That's really cool. Um, you know, for, for smaller marketers that were engaged in SEO, um, you know, one of th- their success metrics was either, you know, am I starting to show up with my domain or secondarily, did I get a, a PR or a digital PR hit that shows up in the SERP, even if I'm not there because I'm still too small. Um, and so that, that feedback loop was great because it would you know, loosen up more dollars from the, from the CMO. But it, it, when you take a step back and look at Marcom or communications and PR more holistically, sort of how big does the, the marketer have to be 
before you guys can get a good read on, oh, you know, this is working, this isn't working. Here's, you know, the, the, the feedback loop of how your PR is doing, right? Because yeah. is, it, is it really medium and large businesses that, that benefit most from you because you have statistically valid content or is there ways that you can help the smaller marketers as well? Yeah, uh, I'd say the method that we're most famous for at Onclusive uh, uh, and, and the technology that we're most known for is we, we invented PR attribution uh, 10 years ago uh, to basically do exactly what we're talking about here, which is not just help you understand that you have some type of media coverage, but actually connect that article back to things like website traffic and website conversions uh, and, and that's no, there's no better way to, if you're in the communications organization, to actually start speaking the language of the CMO than PR attribution. Um, you know, uh, and it's important, I think, to your question, uh, Kevin, to understand that PR drives revenue, right? Your company's PR is already driving revenue. It's already happening. Um, what our software does is simply reveal how much and which strategies are most effectively driving that revenue, right? Onclusive isn't going to in itself, you know, drive the website traffic, right? It's you, the practitioner, your article is driving the traffic and it's already happening. We're just uncovering it. We're just shining a light on it uh, so that you can make decisions about, you know, how to go forward and how to modify your strategy. And so PR attribution is applicable to companies of all sizes and all verticals. Um, but, you know, naturally it does require a company to have some minimum level of media coverage to attribute, right? You have to at least have some articles written about you. Yeah. Um, there's no exact threshold. Um, and even companies with a very small amount of media coverage may find that hey, maybe I only had a, a few individual articles written about me, but one of those articles could actually be driving significant traffic to, the, to your website. Uh, and, and you make a great point at the top of the interview, uh, Kevin, uh, the beautiful thing about digital earned media is that it lives in perpetuity. And we see frequently with PR attribution that you, know, you may have an article that drove a modest amount of traffic in the first month after it was written. But then six months later, you look at that same article, right? And people are still discovering it. It's still indexing in search. It's still being shared. And now you start to see more and more traffic come from that article, you know, over the six month period. Some of the articles that have driven the most traffic for inclusive, for example, uh, you know, were written in 2013, 2012, right? One of our top driving uh, website articles for us is a TechCrunch article from 2012 where they called us the omniture of PR analytics. And it just continues to show up in you know, search engine uh, results. We share it out all the time. And it's nearly a 10 year old article and it's still driving website traffic to us. So what I'm most fascinated about, I mean, obviously I've known you when you've worn many hats, right? From the email marketing space, which is sort of a very you know, data-driven business to being on the publisher side to then being on the sort of marketing analytics side and getting acquired by Nielsen to now, you know, in the earned media side. And uh, for, for all those forms of paid media, the feedback loop was there. So you knew where to double down, right? And I think that's really the most fun for me is this idea that knowing where to double down in PR and, and digital PR and, uh, you know, other forms of earned media is something that, that really... Everyone was in the dark about, you know, in the past. So the idea that they can at least get some directional focus, like, okay, these kinds of messages work and these don't, or these kinds of placements work and these don't, uh, is really, you know, eye-opening, I think, for a lot of agencies and, and mark on people. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, that's at the core of our, our mission is to, you know, reveal those strategies for the first time, right? Um, and and, and we, we talk about working, what's working, right? right. Um, making sure that you're using the metrics that matter, right? Because for a long time, people would actually talk about success using these proxy metrics, right? Um, that worked. Well, what do you mean it worked? Well, we got that article in that media outlet that we consider to be influential that, you know, we believe reaches our target audience. Well, 
that's great, but that's the equivalent of saying my advertising campaign worked because it ran, <laughs> right? Because my ad was served, right? And so we've always felt that, you know, when talking about success and also in order to actually optimize your strategy, uh, you need to actually have metrics that relate to, you know, business outcomes, right? Work, when you talk about working, it should be, how does it affect your bottom line? Um, you know, PR data, right? Um, earned media data um, has been, uh, it's not universal, but has been for years uh, incorporated into marketing mixed models. That's been one method for, for companies to try to understand the relative, um, you know, influence of their, of their PR efforts. Um, and I will say that some of the marketing mixed modeling tools have become increasingly sophisticated over the years. There's some really innovative companies doing, um, you know, some, some interesting things in terms of machine-based uh, models, you know, using um, natural language processing and machine learning. Um, uh, but when incorporating those earned media signals, um, you know, into a marketing mixed model, you know, our advice is that they should be mapping the growth PR metrics, right? We talked about, you know, PR is a revenue driver, right? We do believe that PR is a growth, uh, a, you know, a, a, a growth function, right? So when you are thinking about how do I incorporate earned media and PR data into my marketing mix model, you know, I would encourage you to move away from the simple sort of impressions and reach numbers which have been used, you know, uh, historically, because that's all that marketers have had, but they're very weak proxies to how earned media is actually impacting a bottom line, you know, for the company. Uh, the real story lies in things like the tone and sentiment of the earned media coverage, right? Was it positive coverage about your brand or did, you know, was it very negative coverage, right? Um, uh, you know, another metric we look a lot at is the level of social media engagement that that earned media is receiving, right? Is that article being read a lot? Is it being shared, liked, commented, retweeted a lot, right? Or is it basically being ignored on social media, right? That's actually a, a, a real KPI for the modern communicator. Um, uh, also, you know, share of voice, which is sort of a basic competitive metric, which is simply how much media coverage did I get versus my competition, which again, you know, just a quantity metric, um, you know, I think can be useful, um, but we look at what we call power of voice, um, which is what's the quality of your coverage versus your competition. So, um, so as much as you can be thinking about those true qualitative metrics or real impact metrics uh, and start to incorporate you know, outcome-based data into your media mix models. Um, you know, I think that's when you actually start to um, get a much truer picture of the effect of your of your PR. Yeah, that's great. Um, it's it's sort of funny. One of the things that I think has floated um, earned media even higher in the visibility of some of the marketers I've been talking to has been the the rise in ad blockers. Right in that all forms of earned media are pretty much immune to uh, ad blockers. And, and then you've got this gray zone of influencers. Sometimes they're paid, sometimes they're not, but they also break through the ad blockers. So uh, do you feel like that's raising the sort of awareness things, you know, meta trends like that are sort of raising the awareness of marketing teams like, hey, you know, we should really double down on these kinds of things because our audience is really hard to reach. They're you know forty percent ad block, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, there's no question uh, that ad blockers, uh, these industry-wide shifts around consumer privacy, changes to cookie tracking, um, you know, they're already you know complicating the paid marketing process even further, right? Um, uh, and and in doing so, we've seen a trend. Uh, you know, I think in response to this. Um, towards just, you know, sort of a, a, a return back to contextual marketing, right? And you're seeing it in the paid media world for sure, right? Uh, there's sort of this flight back to context and content. Um, but certainly the use of earned media, um, which is the ultimate contextual marketing, um, you know, we are seeing increasing emphasis around and we are seeing more and more the CMO get, you know, uh, more directly involved in, you know, the communication strategy and 
And we also see content marketing specifically starting to come more to the forefront of the communications, um, you know, priorities. We see more PR teams, communicators, you know, taking the lead in terms of content marketing, owned media development, you know, creating a digital footprint uh, within your own media environments. Uh, so there's no question that, you know, content and, and the flight towards context and contextual marketing is happening. Um, you know, um, one interesting, you know, again, collision here that's happening between sort of, you know, what the communications and the marketing organizations are doing and how they're really coming together uh, is we're seeing another trend where brands are delivering that editorial content, whether it be that great piece of earned media or own media, brands are now delivering that content directly into the news feeds of its intended readers, uh, you know, by amplifying that content in a very targeted way, um, using both organic and paid media channels. So the idea is, you've now discovered, you know, we've, let's say at Inclusive now discovered that that TechCrunch article calling us the Adobe of PR analytics, we've now discovered that that's one of the biggest drivers of new sales for us, right? So we've already made the connection that that piece of editorial is, you know, is driving a lot of revenue for us. Um, but I want to expand my audience, right? I don't just want to rely on TechCrunch's, you know, audience to sort of naturally and organically discover it. I want to put that article in front of as many CMOs as I possibly can, right? And heads of communications, right? And the technology exists with native advertising platforms and social media and, you know, in, in database marketing. Um, so rather than me building a commercial, right? Which, you know, of course, uh, as we've already established, can be less uh, trusted and less influential than a great piece of editorial. Um, you know, I'm actually going to take that TechCrunch article and I'm going to, you know, organically and through paid activation, put it directly in front of the audience who I hope to see that article uh, so that I can actually get the benefit of both worlds here, which is the trusted nature of earned media combined with the control and scale of advertising, right? And so there's, there's another convergence happening between communications and marketing here, which is around the use of your company's most trusted and most valuable content, which is your earned media, um, with, with the benefit of paid media's control and scale. Uh, and, um, you know, as we were sort of thinking through this business model, uh, Jeffrey Moore, uh, who's a friend of ours, and uh, you may know him as the author of uh, Crossing the Chasm and a few other um, pretty seminal, uh, you know, marketing and, and technology books. Um, Jeffrey Moore called this best of both world strategy, reach and frequency with credibility. And so we're seeing that trend more and more, which is the use of, yeah, earned media as advertising, as, as an advertising asset. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I probably shouldn't talk about some of the guerrilla stuff we've done, but some of our most fun strategies have been around if initially, if we got a really good PR hit for a client and then uh, driving paid traffic to it yeah. and taking advantage of the halo effect that comes from the, you know, the fact that this was an independent, you know, unsponsored uh, listing. And then of course that extended into branded content as well, which not everyone would always necessarily realize was branded content. And you could amplify that uh, with running paid media to drive visibility into, into those placements, whether they were paid or not. Of course, the, uh, the unintended byproduct of that is you're helping the, the publisher, right? Because you're doing audience development for them. They actually probably earn a little bit of ad revenue against the article which you were positively mentioned or article about you if it was it was an entirely uh, written about you. Um, but you know th that kind of guerrilla stuff can be super powerful and and you know building the 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 KPIs to understand that is is super critical. So I'm, I'm pleased to hear that you guys have put sort of the infrastructure in place to, to help do that. Yeah, and when we built those KPIs because we saw this as a trend, uh, we actually have a whole analytics suite on Inclusive to specifically measure uh, the effect of those promoted articles, right? right? And it's two categories of data. One is engagement, right? Are people even reading the articles? How much time with the articles are they spending, right? Are they reading the whole thing? Are they only skimming the first 10%? So that reader engagement analytics is the first KPI. 
And then the second KPI is we've um, developed a way to actually extract uh, attitudinal feedback from those readers. Uh, so once the readers completed the article, we actually can ask them questions through a survey format and deliver back to the marketer, you know, actually a sense of whether or not the article shifted people's opinions and whether it potentially increased consideration, you know, what did it really do for their, their brand? How did it impact their reputation? So it's both the mechanism to deliver that article to its intended audience. Um, and then we've got all of this, you know, feedback and validation around the effect of the article. That's really cool. Uh, I've always sort of felt like it, while it was useful, it was sort of the tip of the iceberg when PR agencies would use media equivalents, right? This idea that, oh, if you had bought this an ad in this publication or with this broadcaster, here's yeah. how much you would have paid. You know, and in some cases, I felt like it dramatically understated the value. And I think in other cases, it, it overstated it, you know, because, you know, knowing exactly you know, how many people were, were going to have, it would have seen it in, in the different instances was all over the map. Um, so do, do you feel like there's still opportunity for, for PR agencies to use that metric? Do you feel like it's, it's, it's sort of had its, you know, had its course or run its course? Yeah, so, um, you know, media equivalents, uh, otherwise known as advertising equivalents or ABEs, uh, you know, I, I would not, categorize media equivalents as a valid measure of communications. Um, there's a whole backstory around this, um, which many people are not aware, which is the media equivalence method was actually developed like a hundred years ago when the only form of media was print media. And literally at the dawn of what we now know as public relations or you know, earned media placements, um, the only thought that they had initially to talk about the value of that was to literally take a ruler and measure the dimensions of the article on the newspaper. And the equivalence was literally, if that was a paid advertisement, what would be the CPM? How much revenue would I have earned or, you know, or how much you know, would I have sold if I were the publisher? Uh, and, and that was the media equivalence. So th this concept, and, and I mean, it, it's pretty obvious that that says nothing about the quality of the content and certainly says nothing about the impact of the content, right? So that's obvious, um, but it's incredible. So this is the, a relic of a hundred year old sort of print based methodology, which has zero correlation with the quality or impact of the press coverage. Uh, and, uh, and, and for so long, and this is actually at the heart of part of what the, 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 you know, communications industry has struggled with for so long, there haven't been that many viable alternatives. And that's of course what Onclusive is focused on. Um, fortunately, I'm not alone in this opinion. Um, AMEC, which is the International Association for the Measurement and Evaluation of Communication, it's sort of the governing body for this type of stuff. Um, came out almost a decade ago, directly stating that media equivalents are not the value of communication. Um, and they're actually got this sort of, you know, manifesto that they created and now are on the third version of called the Barcelona Principles, uh, which is basically the official principles of measurement standards for the communications industry. And, um, and they actually have um, basically, you know, outlawed, <laughs> uh, you know, media equivalents, right? They've completely condemned it as a measure um, and conversely state, and I quote, measurement and evaluation should identify outputs, outcomes, and potential impact. None of which, of course, media equivalents can predict. <laughs> well, there's a related pet peeve that I have that early... Uh some social media agencies used early on and I just, it continues to bug me. But when they, when they say that the reach was people who could have seen something as opposed who did, you know, uh, so hopefully that has gone by the wayside. I don't, I don't see that as often as I did early on, but you know, that used to really push my buttons when people would say, oh yeah, the, 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 we had this much social media reach. <laughs> yeah, potential reach, right? Potential they need to qualify. Reach, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I think the, uh, the more that marketers have the tools at their disposal to really tie things to business outcomes, I think the more effective the marketing team will be. So it's been, been really great learning 
from you, uh, how you guys are moving marketers in that direction. We're working on it. It's an exciting <laughs> mission. And uh, fortunately, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, folks who are coming on the crusade with us. Great. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me and um, we'll stay in touch as you continue down the evolution of solving this problem for marketers. It was a pleasure and thank you for the opportunity.